Big news everyone, Figma just released a few amazing prototyping updates that can make your designs feel even more realistic. We're going to look at those today, feel free to follow along in the description box below if you want to play around while watching the video. Let's jump in. The first update is to do with scrolling behavior. I've got this design here and if I just unclip it, I just go in here and unclip the content. You can see I've got loads and loads of shoes. I've got this discount code in the middle and I'm gonna want it to scroll properly, right? So what I'm gonna do, clip it again, go into prototype and say, instead of no scrolling, I'm gonna say vertical scrolling. Start a flow point and just play it. Now, if I start scrolling, you already see the problem. Our tab bar and our nav bar disappear and we don't want that. Previously, if we wanted to stop an item from scrolling, we'd click on it, go into design, and next to constraints, there'd be a tick box that says fixed position when scrolling. This now lives within prototype. So I'm gonna select the nav bar and the tab bar over here and say position, fixed, stay in place. So scroll in parent will be the default, which means it scrolls however it parents scrolls. Fixed, stay in place is what we want. Now, if I jump back into my prototype, we can see that my nav bar and my tab bar stay exactly where they are when we're scrolling. The next update is one that I know people have been waiting for for so long, and that's making something sticky to the top edge of the page. Meaning once it reaches the top, it just stays there unless you keep scrolling everything else. So for example, if I have this discount code and I want it to stay at the top once it reaches there, let's do that together. I'll go back into my designs and just unclip the content so we can find this little discount code. I'm going to select it, go into prototype, and then in the scroll behavior position, I'm gonna say sticky, stop at top edge. Let's see. Into my prototype, I'm gonna scroll up. Okay, it looks like it's not happening, but it is. Huh? If I go back into my prototype, we'll now find out that this sticky, it works, but it does need some tweaking. You really need to place things in the right location. So for example, if I go back into design, select my nav bar and just remove the fill, when I jump back into my prototype, you'll see that it is actually here. So, so you see that code is sticking to the top, but within the layers panel, it's underneath the other shoes and also it's at the top and there is a nav bar there. Let's fix that. So it's very simple. All we have to do is give it some sort of container that will block it from going all the way to the top. I'm going to select the item, frame it, and then let's have a look. This is 87 pixels high which means we need to give it that 87 pixels at the top of basically nothing. So the nothing touches the top and then this item is kind of underneath. Then we're still needing to fake it a little bit. So I'm gonna add, let's say 100 onto here um, and then just move it back into place make sure that it's centered and make sure that it's still within your frame. Sometimes when you move things around, especially because it's not inside of the kind of frame size, but it is outside of it, things tend to go a bit strange. So I've put that here. I'm gonna say prototype and say sticky, stop at top edge. Let's have a look at that. So I'm gonna just restart it, click on R. Let's have a look. So I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Okay, it stays, but you see some of the shoes are still on top of it. Best way around that, I'm gonna grab it in the layers panel and move it all the way to the top. I'm gonna change the name of it to code. Now let's have a look. Fabulous. So let's have a look from the start. We are here, once we start scrolling, when we get to that code, it just stays at the top. Brilliant. Another scrolling update has to do with resetting where the scroll was. For example, I wanna prototype it so that when someone clicks on new in, they go to the new in page. I'm gonna do that, keep it super simple. I'm gonna make it dissolve and go there. And the same thing back. So when you click on this back icon, you go back to the home page. I'm gonna move the flow to the home and play it. When I click on new in, I go over here, when I click on back, I go back home. Perfect, right? But let's have a look at this. If I'm in new in and I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Let's say I stop next to these green shoes. When I go back home and come back in, I've lost my scrolling position. Sometimes we want that, sometimes we don't. So the way around that, if we go into my prototyping update, we need to look at the noodle that kind of generates this page. If I click on that noodle, state management over here, and it says reset scroll position. That means that it knows when I come to this page, I need to reset it. We don't want that, right? So I'm gonna untick that. Now, if we have a look, I'm gonna go back to home, click on new in, scroll down to my green shoe over here, back home, back to new in and I've remained in the same position. If I move down now, I wanna see next to this red shoe, go back, new in, 
I've stayed in the same position. So now you know how to initiate both of the options. Next update has to do with the component state. So I have this basic toggle over here and it has some component interactions, meaning that when I tap on this, it goes to this, tap on this, it goes to this. Then I've used an instance of this switch inside of this component that's called notify me. Now this one has a few things happening. So the user will be able to toggle this on and off because of the component property, but they'll also be able to tap on the learn more to expand a bit of text. I've used this component in this kind of pop-up, letting you know that an item is out of stock. Let's set that up. So let's say this boot is out of stock. So when someone taps on it, we're gonna connect a noodle to here and say, open overlay. We're gonna have these two ticked so it's easier to close it and it has a bit of background behind it. And when I play this, you'll be able to see that it works. So I'll scroll all the way up, get my boots, click on them. Now I have this pop-up coming up. This works perfectly and this works perfectly, but What's happening now is they're not gonna work together. So if I toggle this, so now it's on, and then I click on learn more, it's gonna toggle that off. Let's try that again, toggle on. Oh, ah, what's happening? Okay, so the reason for that is because our state management is set to reset this component. Let's have a look. If I go into here, into my notify me component, and I click on one of these noodles, you'll see that it says reset component state. And that means that anytime it goes to a new component, it's gonna reset it. Just like with the scrolling before, we're gonna look at the noodle that initiates kind of the new thing. So if I untick this, and I'm gonna untick it the other way back as well, we're gonna jump back into our prototype. You can see that now, if I toggle this on and say less, that toggle is gonna stay. So now they're not affecting each other. There's no resetting happening. So if I tap out of it and then click on the boots again, we've lost everything, right? Because we've reset it. So this is for us to decide. If we want our prototype to reset, because let's say we're using this overlay for a bunch of different shoes and we want it to feel like a new experience every time, we just tick the reset component state. So anytime you open it, it looks as if it's brand new. But if we are only using it once and we want it to remember, so let's say I'm gonna toggle it on and I'm gonna open this learn more. If I go back into here and just click on this noodle and make sure that this isn't ticked, when I go back into my prototype, every time I click on these shoes to open the overlay, it will be in the exact same state that I left it. If I close this, click out, open it again, it's gonna stay the same. So it's not gonna reset it. Last update, and this isn't that new, but it's new for me, so I'm gonna say that it's new. Let's say we have some sort of gallery, okay? So I've got these three types of shoes here. They're called your picks and there's three of them. And I have this drag interaction already set up. Let me show you. If I create a flow point and just play this, you can see that when the user drags, they kind of scroll through these different images and price points change. And we have this sort of uh, circle at the top letting us know which pick we are on. Let's connect this to our home screen now. So I've got this your top picks over here. And I'm gonna say this goes probably to the first one, uh, keep it on dissolve. Let's connect the back button. I'm gonna hold down command to deep select this um, arrow and holding down shift as well. So I'm selecting the vector. I wanna select the frame that it's in. So to select the parent, shift and enter brings us one step up. And I'm gonna add an interaction. So when this is tapped, I wanna to navigate to Sunshine Shoes Home and let's make it dissolve, great. Let's play this and see how it goes. So I'm gonna go into here, click on back. I'm in the home, great, your top picks. And I can scroll through them, click on back, great. But if I click on your top picks and let's say I scroll to the third one. So I'm in the third one, it's uh, three over here, 100 pounds, and it's this kind of flashy pair of trainers. If I go back home and come back in, I've reset to my first pair of shoes, so I'm not maintaining where I was. Scrolling position won't help us here because we're not scrolling through a single page, we're moving between three different pages. If we would have set it up in a way where the image and all the information underneath was a component and then it had three different variations and you were just scrolling through the variations of the component, then we could have used our reset component state tick box like we did before. So we didn't reset it, so we'd stay on the same one. But if it is three different pages, there is a way to fix it using sections. If I jump back into design and over here where you can select a frame, you can also select a section. I'm just going to drag it around these three frames over here. Now, I'm gonna go back into prototype. 
this noodle that connects your topics to this first one, that's what's blocking us, right? It means that your topics will always go to number one. But if I wanted to remember where the user left it, instead of connecting it to this one, I'll connect this noodle to the section. So the back buttons are still connected to this frame because they're all going to the same place. But now your topics is gonna go into this section to wherever we left it. Let's have a look at that. If I click on your topics, I'm on this shoe. Let me scroll to my fancy shoe, go back and click on your topics again. I'm gonna be back to my fancy shoe because it's connected to the section. Those were our amazing new Figma prototyping updates. If you wanna learn more about prototyping, make sure to check out my other videos about that topic. Let me know in the comments below what other videos you wanna see. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. See you at the next one.